Now, when it comes to this issue, I've never been more certain that we're on the side of the righteous. I mean, that's not to say we're, no, we're the good people, they're the bad people. But on this issue, we're speaking with the truth, we're speaking for goodness, and we're fighting against an evil in our society that's corrupting and harming our children. Stand so it's great to see you. Stand closer. Okay, so it's great to see you here, sharing our concern on this issue, hearing a bit more about it. And now, in a minute, when I talk, some of these things are quite difficult to talk about through a microphone in a public place. So hopefully you've got one of our What Are They Teaching Our Children leaflets. If you've got that, if you can have that in front of you, I'm going to refer to some of that in a minute. If you haven't got one, um, yeah, wave your hand and someone will come around and, and give you one. There's some in a box here. Um, so if you can have a leaflet at the ready for a couple of minutes' time. So what are we here for? Protecting children. There are lots of people in Glasgow and Scotland who've got the job title child protection. But when it comes to this, they don't protect children. It's left to us to do it from the outside, because the people on the inside in general are not bothered. They are happy to see children corrupted and damaged in this way. I just thought I'd bring this book to show you to start off. This is from my local library in the lovely leafy suburb of Collington in Edinburgh. On the teenage section in the library was this book, Beyond Magenta. I won't read you the passage from it, because it's not suitable to read in public. But suffice it to say, it includes a passage that someone saying, I enjoyed engaging in very specific sexual acts at the age of six. That's what it says in this book. And this book was sitting on the shelf in my local library, in the teenager section. So I went up to the library, I said, uh, I'm not sure this is quite suitable. They said, oh, email the head office, let's see. So I emailed them, and Edinburgh City Council replied. What did they say? They said, oh, we'll move it from the teenage section to the adult section, as if that's any better. So Edinburgh City Council are quite happy for adults to read about young children enjoying sexual activity. I mean, what message is that to be delivering? And that's what they're spending our council tax on. This didn't need moving to the adult section. Obviously, it needed moving to the bin. It should never have been bought. This book was on the recommended book list published by the Scottish Government along with this transgender guidance. Eventually, uh, after I'd written to several organisations, eventually they removed it from their reading list. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I thank you. Now, the sex survey has been something that was on the theme for this. I'll just say a couple of words about that. This sex survey has been implemented, the government wanted it implemented around Scotland. The sex bit of it is just one problem. There's other problems as well. It invites children to assess their parents. How good do you think your parents are? How loved are you feeling? Are your parents good at listening to you? You know, so more or less saying, you know, give, give your parents a rating. We're, we're the teachers, we're the school. We're the ones who are really in charge. You tell us what you think of your parents. How appalling is that? How appalling is that? Parents can ask their children, what do you think of your teachers? That's fine. Teachers asking pupils, what they think of their parents, that's not fine. Now to you and I, does that not seem obvious? To the Scottish Government, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And the sex questions on it, appalling, appalling. They present the message to young people, but well, we expect you have an illegal underage sex of various different forms, and we assume that's just normal, so we'll, we'll just ask you, that, could you, we think you're probably doing that, so just tell us if you are or not. That's the message it gives, it normalises these sexual activities for, in some cases, underage pupils. And quite rightly, there's been an outcry about it. It's been on the front page of the newspaper, questions in the parliament. Really good to see that attention. But my point is always this. The sex survey is the tip of the iceberg. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's not the heart of the problem. That That's just a, a minor manifestation of the Scottish government's frankly twisted philosophy of childhood and sexuality. The sex survey is the tip of the iceberg. The more serious issue is the sex education, which we've been talking about a lot. So if you've got a leaflet, if you just have a look at that. I'll, I'll refer to some things in it. As I say, I can't exactly have big boards with some of these images on standing in the middle of the, uh, of the, of the street. But just have a look at some of the things with this. Now, one of the big challenges, uh, if someone could help give a leaflet out, there's a, a box here. Around there. One of the big challenges, we tell people about it, we show them the pictures, and people say, no, nah, I don't believe it. 
You're making it up. As if as a political party for year after year, we spend our time just making things up and lying about it. Obviously, you know, this is true. We, we can show you on their own website, this is the Scottish Government's recommended sex education material. But on the other hand, I can understand why people can't believe it. I mean, if someone showed this to me, I would think, surely not. Surely that cannot be what people are proposing as taught to children. But this is what's happening. Just while we're in Glasgow, the leader of Glasgow City Council sat in the council building, making, helping to make the promotional video endorsing these sex education materials. This is new. So these are being used in uh, Glasgow. So let's start with our with primary school there. Just uh, look inside there, the first page. The top left image there, there's various people in bed. I mean, the primary school kids are basically teaches them how to have sex. Unnecessarily graphic, unnecessarily detailed, but that's what's there. The picture on top right, a couple of boys there, that's from a video, and the video shows these boys falling in love. Now this is teaching children, prepubescent children. So if you give them the message, some people like boys, some people love boys, some people love girls. But what do the young kids think? You know, a young boy thinks, yeah, I like playing with boys, actually. I'm not much for playing with uh, girls, I like playing with boys. Oh, that's called being gay, is it? I mean, what is the point of presenting these messages? But look at the rainbow flag there, love is love. Why should five-year-olds in primary school be told that they have to endorse, they have to agree with the sexual choices of adults? Because that's the message that's given. This is what adults do, and you have to agree with it. You have to celebrate it. You have to say, you think this is all wonderful and great. Why should children be pressurized into endorsing the choices of adults? They just shouldn't be. I mean, in the picture there of the, the female genitals, I mean, I just find it unbelievable that that's from a slide from a PowerPoint presentation. Imagine the class, eight and nine year olds, boys and girls sitting there in the class. The teacher projects that onto the whiteboard or gives them a worksheet with that image on and they, they answer questions labeling the different parts of it. I mean, it's just beyond the pale. It's beyond the pale. It completely takes away children's innocence, their sense of, you know, the sense of mystery and mystique. Sex is something special. The opposite sex is something special. It just takes all that away. It takes away their inhibitions um, and the sense of their embarrassment they normally feel and makes them more open, I think, to sexual activity. So it, it's corrupting. It's corrupting. There's no need for primary school children to be sitting there looking at those images. I mean, if that's not bad enough, let's go to the secondary school page. Look at the middle page there. I mean, that image on the bottom left illustrated a certain sort of sexual activity, including using, you know, a sex toy. I mean, I just think it's obscene. It's obscene. I mean, I, we don't, we're, we feel a bit uncomfortable giving this leaflet for, to people. Because a lot of people say, we don't want to see that. I don't really want to see, I don't want to see things like that at all. I don't want to see them. But the reason we have to show people is so people can realize the truth of what's going on in school. I mean, how many mums and dads, when they're packing their kids off to school, are thinking that's what they want teaching? That's what they want in a lesson? Hardly any. Hardly any. And yet the Scottish Government assumes, well, they, they just decide that's what everyone's going to get. That's what people need to be taught. Now in Scotland, of course, what's the age of consent? What's the age of consent? 16, not really, it's 13, it's 13, it's not really 16, it's 16 officially, but the policy is that they won't prosecute anyone if they're younger, unless the age difference is too big, and children are taught that, children are taught, you know, if you have sex when you're 13, don't worry about it, the police won't do anything, you know, there's not really anything going to happen, so the, the message is, the age of consent is really 13, again, a really harmful message, lots of parents are trying to say to the kids, Come on, we think you ought to wait, probably best not to have sex yet. But the school's saying, it's no problem. In fact, they even teach, this sounds bizarre. I was saying this to the, in a BBC interview the other night. The woman didn't really believe me, maybe. But children are taught they've got a right to have illegal underage sex. They've got a right to have illegal underage sex. I know that sounds utterly idiotic, it is. But that's the fact, that they've got a right to explore their sexuality in safe and pleasurable ways at any age. But does that sound quite concerning to you? That sounds quite concerning to me. Now, so at this point, we can just mention the man who's overseen these resources, Dr. Colin Morrison. And his uh, PhD dissertation's online. What does he write about? 
He writes about the need to break down the barrier between childhood and sexuality. Break down the barrier between childhood and sexuality. I don't know about you, but when I think about the barrier between childhood and sexuality, I think, yeah, great. That's absolutely the way it should be. Let's maintain that barrier. Let's maintain children's innocence. Let's insulate them from sexual experiences. But no, he thinks the opposite. He thinks we've got to break down the barrier between childhood and sexuality. Now you're probably thinking, that's actually very concerning. You're quite suspicious of that person. You think something's far wrong with his values. The Scottish government thinks he's the man to put in charge of sex education. I mean, you can hardly make it up, can you? But it's the truth. It's the truth. So I wrote to the Scottish government a couple of months ago, and I said, do you realize Dr. Colin Morrison wants to break down the barrier between childhood and sexuality? This is very concerning. Um, I think he should be removed from his post. He's not suitable to be in charge of the sex education for our children. He's not suitable to be on the Scottish Education Council. And they eventually replied, after about four reminders, what do you think they said? Did they say, we agree with you? Those views are abhorrent, we've, we've sacked him. Of course they didn't. Did they say, we've looked into this, we think there's no problem with what he says, so he's staying? No, they'd never say that, would they? So they reply saying, uh, we, we choose people with a committee, and we choose people with a variety of point of views, we choose to waffle, waffle. So such an important issue, basically a child protection concern, I would say, someone with those attitudes in a really influential position in Scottish education, but the government just ignore it. Just reply with a bit of waffle, hope it'll go away. Well, we're not gonna go away, we're gonna keep bringing it up, and that's what we're doing here today. I mean, other, thank you. I mean, from the central panel there, there's the, the infamous image of the banana dipping into Nutella. I mean, just appalling, trivializing, vulgar, really unpleasant, but that's what's regarded as good teaching material by the SNP. Again, the picture of the boy sitting on the chair as well, uh, pretty vulgar. The other thing I, I would mention, it mentioned in the text of the leaflet, is they talk about various sexual practices, including one, I'm, I'm just too embarrassed to even mention it here, uh, that they talk about. Um, yeah, I'm not going to mention it, you can read about it in the middle panel. To be honest, I'd never even heard of that sexual activity. I'd never even heard of it. Um, and I learnt about it from the sex education. I don't think children should be learning about it. Because they're taught, you know, these are the different ways you can have sex. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And there's no teaching about, and by the way, these ones are really dangerous. By the way, some people think these ones are really degrading, that these are not so good. There's none of that, it's just, here's the menu. So, you know, 12 to 15 year olds, this is who it's been taught to, you know, take your pick. All these options are available to you. What damage is that gonna do to young people in their teenage years? Huge damage, huge damage. Pornography, 12 to 15 year olds, what's the message? Pornography, nothing to feel guilty about. Perfectly normal, perfectly natural. You just go ahead. Don't let anyone tell you there's any sort of problem with that. They'll say, you know, be careful of the bad stuff. Be careful you don't get addicted. But the basic idea of watching pornography, they say that's fine. Is that right? No, that's just not true. It's just not true. It is not fine. It damages a person. It damages the way they relate to other people. It undermines their capacity to form healthy relationships in the future. It's a really important moral issue. So for example, virtually every church, every mosque, other religions as well, they would say, no pornography, that's not right. That's not something you ought to do. That's something that's wrong. The Scottish government teaches children the exact opposite. The Scottish government says, basically, the Catholic Church is wrong. The Evangelical Church is wrong. The Church of Scotland's wrong. The Muslims are wrong. The Buddhists are wrong. The Hindus are wrong. Huge numbers of decent people, they're all wrong. Ignore all them, we're telling you, watching pornography is fine. It's nothing to feel guilty about. And so far, they're getting away with it, but I say, but we're fighting back, aren't we? We're making a difference. But there's also a video, it's a bit like playing taboo here, because I don't want to mention certain words in public. There's also a video that recommends an unorthodox way of engaging in sexual uh, intercourse, let's put it that way, and says it's actually probably better than like conventional heterosexual intercourse. It says it's probably more enjoyable. Okay, how many mums and dads want their teenage daughters teaching that or their sons teaching that? 
by encouraging them to experiment with different forms of sexual activity. Uh, this one in particular, which is uh, dangerous, carries very significant health risks for the lessons in school, just, you know, go ahead, here's the menu, take your pick, give whatever you like a try. This one's particularly good, apparently. I mean, well, it, it's sick, it's sickening, absolutely sickening. But there's another video as well that basically says, uh, uh, lesbian sex is probably better, more enjoyable. So you've got your teenage girl sitting there, getting that message. The lesbian sex is probably better. Why don't you give it a try? Now, whatever your view about uh, LGBT issues, is it really the role of a school to be saying to the pupils, hey, this, is, this one's really good. It might even be better. Why don't you give this a try? I would say absolutely not. Absolutely beyond the pale. What are they doing in schools? Right, the last panel, the last one of the three. Changing gender. What's presented? I mean, the leaflet, there's a little quote from a, a pupil. My teacher worked with me on an email which was sent to all staff to let them know about my true, my true name and gender. And that's what's happening in virtually every high school around Scotland. Ask a teacher in a high school how many kids there are who've changed gender or who are transitioning. I spoke to a teacher the other week and they said barely a week goes by without getting an email that another pupil has started transitioning. This is what happened. So even a five-year-old, a five-year-old goes and sees the teacher, a five-year-old boy, and says, uh, teacher, uh, I think I'm actually a girl. What the teacher is instructed to do by the Scottish Government is to say basically, well done, that's really brave of you, you've realised who you truly are, and we support you in that. What would you like us to call you? Uh, what would your pronouns be? Uh, would you like everyone else to know about this? Shall we just treat you as a girl? Shall we change your name on the school database? And then the worst thing, as if that all wasn't bad enough, the worst thing is, they then say, shall we tell your parents about this or shan't we? And if the five-year-old said, uh, no, actually, I'd like you to keep it a secret in school, then the Scottish government says, it should be kept a secret. It should be kept a secret. Now, I think that is, uh, 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 what word suitable? It, it's evil, it's evil. Every member of the SNP should resign about that. Every... Every SNP MSP should resign over it. Every member of the Scottish Cabinet and the Scottish Government should resign over that. Whoever would think that it's okay to separate children from their parents and let the children live in, the, in this secret world at school while deliberately keeping the parents out of the picture. But just another story related to that, not about the transgender. But in Scotland, 12 year olds and upwards, they're allowed to keep whatever they like secret from their parents and make their own decisions. So I was talking to a teacher the other week, and uh, she was a, a senior teacher, and one of the pupils in the school had had an abortion. I think a 13-year-old girl had an abortion. And the parents came to see the teacher and said, we're really worried about our daughter. She's just not herself. She's, she's really down. She, there's, there's no spark about her. Something's really on her mind. Something's wrong. We just don't know what it is. Do you know what the problem is? Have you got any idea? And that teacher had to stand there saying, well, uh, yeah, um, sort of don't know, had to basically lie, saying that she didn't know what the problem was with this girl, even though the teacher knew exactly what the problem was, but she had to keep it secret from the girl's parents. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. It's the culture in Scotland, and we're here to challenge it. Right, just carrying on with the transgender thing at school. If parents do happen to find out that a child's changed gender at school, if the parents come in and say, well, we're a bit concerned about this. We're not sure this is the best decision for our child. Can we just slow down a bit here? Maybe we need to talk about this a bit. Then they've got a, a name for that type of parent. I've got a name for them as well. My name for them is good parents. Loving, concerned, good parents. The Scottish Government's got a name for them. The Scottish Government calls them unsupportive parents. Unsupportive parents. And uh, do children have a right to unsupportive parents? What should be done if parents are unsupportive? Well, it sounds like a bit of a social work issue. Maybe these children need to be put with supportive parents, possibly. Maybe with a, you know, a children's home or with foster parents. You can see the way it's heading. It's absolutely outrageous. Now, I think transgender ideology is an, is an idol in our society. It's an idol. And I'll tell you why, because an easy way to recognize an idol, this is what you look for. Anything that people are prepared to sacrifice their children to, is an idol. And in Scotland, 
the Scottish Government, the Scottish education system in general, they're willing to sacrifice the children's well-being to the idol of transgender ideology. And we've got to challenge it, we've got to stop it. So what we're here for is just to show that people, people do care about this. I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in America. During the lockdown, lots of pupils were working at home and the parents started seeing what they were being taught. And the parents were horrified at the absolute junk and political indoctrination and the gender ideology, you name it, that was being taught in schools. And a huge number of the parents said, right, we've had enough of this. And it's now in America, it's become a major, major political issue. People are getting elected, making it their central issue. Uh, but like, look what happened in Florida, other states as well. It's really become a huge issue. And the same can happen here. The same can happen here. People need waking up. People need to realize what's going on. And then people need to be challenged about their values to realize just how utterly atrocious this is and how much damage it's doing uh, to our children. Now I started with a, with a Bible quote in a, quite a light-hearted way, but this is another uh, words from Jesus as it happens. If anyone causes these little ones to stumble, it would be better for them to have a millstone tied around the neck and for them to be thrown into the sea. Now that's pretty strong words, isn't it? Now, when I read that as a Christian, I don't think it's my job to go tying millstones around people's necks and throw them into the sea. It's my, not my job to bring God's judgment. Okay, that's God's department. But it's our job to protect the children. It's our job to protect the children. And that's what we're trying to do. Because where does, where does this come from? You know, where's this come from? It comes from the top. It comes from the Scottish Government. And in almost all these things I've talked about, it's unchallenged in the Scottish Parliament. It's unchallenged. And we're here today because we're the ones, we're the part of the growing movement that's fighting back on behalf of Scotland's children. So well done for being here. Make sure you get a leaflet. And I uh, hope to see you again. Thank you.